Hello, my name is Mark with Wright Products Incorporated, and this is the first of two videos that we have available that show step-by-step -step instructions on building wall flashings for walls where they project through a shingle roof. Three common examples you'll run into would be a fireplace, chimney, dormer walls, or two-story walls. Roof flashings are the place where most roof leaks occur on a, on a shingle roof. And they're the most important part of a roof installation. Uh, ideally, these roof flashings need to last the life of the shingle roof, and, and in most cases, they, they can even be reused when it's time to re-roof. If you install a poor quality roof flashing, one that relies on roof cement to seal critical areas in your flashing, you're gonna have problems with the roof starting to leak either at day one or at some point in the future when the roof cement cracks and fails. The method we're gonna demonstrate is a two-part system. The first video is gonna concentrate on the base flashing, and the second video will demonstrate how to install the counter flashing. Let's get started. All right, we built a section of roof to use for the demonstration and I installed a fireplace chimney to help us with that. And when we, we flash this chimney, we're gonna flash along the bottom with the, the sill flashing and up along the sides, we'll be using step flashing. That process is gonna be identical for like a dormer wall or a two-story wall that comes up through a roof. On a fireplace, we also have to flash around the top or the head flashing for the top of the fireplace. That's gonna be have some unique parts to it that you won't have on a dormer or a two-story wall. I installed some of the shingles. I've got some starter shingles on here, full shingles at the bottom. The last shingle I put on has got a notch here around the corner of the fireplace, and I'm to the point where we're ready to start installing our flashing. When it rains, we have to deal with water basically coming down the, the face of the wall, and then we also have to deal with water that's running down the surface of the roof. It's the job of the counter flashing to get any water that's running down the face of the wall out on top of our base flashing. And it's the job of the base flashing to take any water that comes off the counter flashing and then also any water coming down the surface of the, of the roof to get that water out on top of the shingles. Now I'm gonna start by installing a flash right corner shingle at the corner of our, our wall here. This product is designed specifically for the outside corners of your base flashing. It's a one-piece corner. There's no hole in the corner. It can be used right hand, left hand, and it's flexible enough that it can be adjusted to any roof pitch. It's impossible to fabricate an outside corner out of sheet metal here that doesn't have a hole in the corner. You don't want to be relying on roof cement to seal that hole in the corner. I've seen good quality flashing work done where they use galvanized steel or copper and then soldered the corners, but that's extremely time consuming and expensive. Let's put on our, our bottom piece of flashing, our sill flashing next. I've got a piece of aluminum here with two three inch legs. I've got it cut the same length as the fireplace. You can use gutter apron for this part. It works real well. I wanted, I wanted this to be black so I bent it out of a piece of trim coil. But we're gonna hold it up here in the corner. And I like to, if possible, I like to nail it to the wall and uh, don't really need to nail it to the roof. That's just a nail hole that could potentially leak in the future. If this were a real masonry fireplace, you'd have to use some type of masonry anchor here. The, the ones with the small drive-in pins on them work real well. Now for the side wall, we wanna go up along the side of this chimney with step flashing. And you install a piece of step flashing with each course of shingles. Uh, for years, we used these five by seven step flashings that that have a two and a half inch flange along the roof and a two and a half inch flange up the side of the wall. I, I really never use them anymore. I Basically the same concept, but we like to use these eight by eight step flashings, which gives us four inches out and four inches up the wall. One of the things that can happen with your base flashing is you can get water damming or water, water can kind of boil up or, or run backwards and get up over the top of these wall flanges, so by using the the, the four inch step, shingle, step flashing shingle, you've got more protection for that. Uh, sometimes the gutter installer will stick a downspout and an elbow right here on this corner. You'll have 
leaves and snow and ice build up and before long a hard rain can kind of boil up and and get over the top of your your base flashing so that's the big improvement using the larger piece of step flashing so with that in mind i'm going to take a piece of this is house wrap sealing tape it's used commonly with uh house wrap to seal around windows when you put house wrap on a house i i like this stuff i'm gonna i'm gonna put a piece right here before we we put the next step shingle on it and I'm going to put that right on and, and right on around the corner here and that's going to effectively raise the flange on that corner shingle and then we're ready to, to install our first piece of step step flashing here. A lot of times I'll put that on the wall and kind of mark, mark this corner for the slope of the wall. And on a masonry chimney, a lot of times I'll put one nail right in the top corner like that. Uh, if, you're, if you're working on a wood frame wall, you can easily just shoot it onto the wall here. And uh, then we're ready for our next shingle. <laughs> now I don't, I don't like to nail too close to the wall same principle you use with a valley. You want to stay away from with your nails. I don't like getting nails any closer to six inches. A lot of times in this situation, I like to put a nail up here at the top to hold it in place. Now we're, we're, after we put the shingle on there, we can put our next piece of step flashing on there. I like to put the bottom of it up, just up high enough so the, so the next shingle is going to cover it. And I'll nail it in the top corner here. Now sometimes this wall on our on our demonstration, it's kind of a small wall. Sometimes you'll get some pretty, you know, pretty big walls on a two-story wall on a roof that we have to roof around. You don't, you don't want to use a continuous piece of flashing like this and just bring your shingles over there and stop. The problem with that is water's trying to run laterally underneath those shingles. You can try and seal under them with roof cement, but if the corners of the shingles catch some water and shoot it back, or if your cement roof cement cracks, you can get water going laterally back under your under your roof shingles. That's the advantage to step flashing. Each each course the water's forced out on top of the shingles. You know if it runs laterally it's going to be out on top of the shingles. If water runs laterally here and starts at the top before long it's back underneath your shingles. So that's the advantage to, to, to using the step flashing with each course of shingles. We're ready for the next shingle. And we're just going to basically keep this up along the side of the roof. Sometimes I kind of underbend these a little bit when I put them on. That helps hold pressure so that both, both flanges stay flat against the roof and against the wall. Another shingle. And another shingle. Put the bottom of this where I wanted it, and this top wall flange is sticking by our top corner a little bit, so I'm going to notch that off in there. Okay, we're, we're ready for our next shingle. And when I, the way I had these started, you're going to run into this when we come across the roof. A full shingle is going to come out right here with a splice close to your wall, and, and, and I, I don't want that. We want to keep, like I said earlier, you want to keep your nails and your splices away from the wall. So. I, I just cut a, what we call a single tab shingle and put it in and that way when I put my next shingle on here it's not gonna it's not gonna splice right here it's gonna splice up here now this we're getting ready to go around the top corner of the fireplace now this is called the the head or the 
head flashing of the fireplace, and there's a couple different ways to do this. We, this is, we construct a little saddle roof, or they're sometimes called a cricket, and put the, build something like that on top of the fireplace, and that diverts water away from this back wall, so water's not coming back and, and getting trapped and hitting right there. And we're going to demonstrate <clears throat> flashing this chimney with, with two methods, one using the saddle or the cricket, and one is we're going to we're going to show you can you can get by without a saddle on a on a on a chimney, especially if it's a a small one like this demonstration where it's just two foot wide. You know, the wider your chimney is, the more water you got. Possibly too, the longer your rafters are above it, the more water you got coming down here. The more important it is to put a, a saddle roof on there. We we pretty much put them on all of ours, but it's it's probably not necessary on a two foot chimney. So I'm gonna. I'm going to show that method first, roofing around here and, and, and the head flashing without using a, a saddle roof. All right, so to flash around the head of this chimney and, and not use a saddle, I, I, I bent up a special piece of aluminum here. And I'm going to use an 8-inch flange that goes up the wall and a 12-inch flange here that goes up the roof. I cut, I cut this top section I notched it that's basically the width of the chimney so and then this is gonna this roof flange will will stick out by the roof four inches on each side like that so that's 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 how we're gonna put that piece in there. first uh, we want to put our next shingle in here so we, we notched it out to go around the, the uh, chimney and then we're ready for a, a corner flashing shingle here. I just form that to the roof so it, so it lays down nice and flat. Got that nailed on here, and we'll we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna extend that wall flange up again with a piece of ceiling tape or uh, window tape. And then we're going to put our, our piece of head flashing on here, right to the corner. Okay, now it looks looks to me like my piece is over bent just a little bit. It's not sitting very tight against the wall, so I'm going to flatten it out a little bit. Yeah, that works a little better. And I'm going to nail this thing. You don't need a lot of nails in this stuff, especially not close to your, your chimney. I'm going to nail it just up here at the top side corners. <clears throat> now one of your your biggest enemies here is, is water dam again. We, we talked about it a little bit but when this water's coming down hitting this flashing especially without a cricket tries to boil up, tries to get over this flange, tries to boil back and, and get over your flashing in this direction. If it would get up over here you know it's under the roof. So that's why I made an 8 inch flange and a 12 inch flange to give this this water the ability to do some water damming and still still be okay we're still still on top of the flashing so when we when you rough across over the top of this we don't we don't want to put any nails in here because water that would dam up underneath these shingles could get to these nail holes and leak so we're ready for our next shingle so we're going to put this next shingle on here i, I notched it so it goes on there and you can see I stayed a couple three inches away from this. This shingle's really not doing anything for you. The, the piece of aluminum's doing the work here. We're just going to put this on for aesthetics. It looks nice. I'm going to put a nail up here. I missed it. I'm going to put a nail up there in the top. I don't want to put any nails out here. Normally you nail this shingle out here, but I don't want, here again, I don't want any nail holes that close on this flashing. So. 
I'm not going to demonstrate this, but you can get some roof cement out here and just and, and cement that in down to your to your roof flash in there so it doesn't blow off. And then the, we're about we're about past the chimney here at this point. We're going to put one more shingle on here, and that's going to be it. now here again on this one. You could put some roof cement here and just nail the top of it, and then you just go right on up on up with your roof. Now we're going to flash around the top here with a different method or at least showing a, a different method where you use a, a saddle or it's sometimes called a cricket on top of your fireplace. So we, we made one of these up. And uh, a little different process here. The advantage of the, the saddle we talked about is to help divert water around here. You don't have as much of a water damming issue. So. Notched one more shingle to go around under here. And then we want to we want to put our corner flashing shingle on here next. I'm gonna I'm gonna trim this bottom flange off a little bit. Wouldn't really have to do this step, but that mill finished aluminum is gonna show out the bottom underneath the next shingle, so it just looks a little nicer if we cut that back a little bit. And uh, I really don't like to to nail this one right here. I'd probably put a masonry anchor in there if it was brick or on a, which it's gonna be on a fireplace, obviously. And then, with this, with the saddle roof on here, we're basically going to have two small, what we call cut valleys on here. And it's not really the purpose of this video to show how to run a valley, but uh, you're going to end up with two little, two little cut shingle valleys. A cut, uh, a shingle valley like that, one side runs through. We always put the lower ridge, which would be the saddle, run it through first. And it, these shingles come over and they get cut off on top of it. So, you're gonna have a cut valley on the right side. And on the on the left side here, it's just basically the same as your your side wall now. You're gonna basically do the same same process as you would on a side wall. I'm gonna mark this one with the wall corner. With this one, I can get the get the nail a little farther away from the valley. I, I still don't like with the with the water damming uh, above this chimney. I still want to try and anchor this one into the masonry. I'm going to take a piece of ceiling or uh, window tape here again, and this is going to effectively raise the height of that wall flange on that corner there. So then I'm going to go ahead and stick this first shingle in here, flashing shingle in here. Now we're going to, now we're going to roof the, the side of the cricket roof that, that goes up underneath up underneath this roof, this roof coming in to make our cut valley. So we're going to put our first first saddle shingle on here. And I'm going to hold it down here in the corner and shoot it up here and shoot it up here at the top. And then we're ready for another another roof flashing shingle right here at the at the exposure line on your on your uh, shingles at the bottom. We're up to the ridge of our little saddle roof already so I'm gonna 
trim a little excess off here. The bottom goes where your exposure line is on your shingle again. You know, as you get closer to the ridge, you can maybe go ahead and put a nail in it, but here again, it's not, that's really not necessary to put it in the wall here again, just so there's no nails quite so close. And then we're ready for us. Our next shingle on our saddle. Now we want to just bend this right over the ridge, so cut right here. Go ahead and put one right in the top. So if you got a bigger saddle, you're gonna have more of those as you go as you go up and run the saddle saddle side through. Here's another place that's a convenient place to use one of our corner flashing shingles is when you roof over a, a ridge cap like this. Makes a, a corner that, that you can adjust to the roof pitch and caps off that top piece. Of course, later on you would put a, a ridge cap over here. It would hide that. But we're going to go ahead. We got that, that side roof through and then the to finish up this cut valley, we got to run this side across. And this next one, I'm gonna I'm gonna slide underneath that black five and seven there, and I'm gonna slide it over the top of my corner flashing shingle and get it in there. I need to trim a little off of it. I'm going to go under, underneath the black one here. There's no nails in here, hopefully, so I can slide that right in or without hitting them. So that's going to be that's going to be my next course there. It's going to go underneath that one, and uh, and then your next next shingle on a cut valley goes across here like this on top of these and gets gets cut off on a line. That makes your valley. So that concludes our base flashing installation. We've got another video that's available to you now. We're going to come back and, and show how to put counter flashing on this to complete the, the roof flash.